Amen. We just like to welcome out to the Potter's house and on this Sunday morning. Uh, we're going to worship God together in this place. Let's go ahead and stand to our feet, amen. Clap our hands, lift our voices together. And as we sing this song from the top, Rock of Ages. Oh, yes, you are faithful. Let's worship Him together. Let's sing out from the top. In Rock of Ages, you are faithful and true. You are able to do what you have promised. Rock of Ages, you are faithful and just. I will always put my trust in you. You're a shelter. You're a shelter in the time of trouble. A refuge in the time of storm. You're a fortress in a time of struggle, a tower in a time of war. You're a healer in a time of sickness, comfort in a time of grief. You're a stronghold in a time of weakness, a helper in a time of need. Rock of ages, you are faithful and true. You are able to do what you have promised rock of ages you are faithful and just and i will always put my trust in you yes you're a shelter you're a shelter in the time of trouble refuge in the time of storm you're a fortress in the time of struggle a tower in the time of war. You're a healer in the time of sickness. A comfort in the time of grief. You're a stronghold in the time of weakness. A helper in the time of need. Rock of ages. You are faithful and true. You are able to do. You have promised, rock of ages, you are faithful and just, I will always put my trust in you, yes I will always, I will always put my trust in you. Let's continue to worship God together, amen, as we sing this song from the top. Come now is the time to worship. Let's sing it from the top. And come, now is the time to worship. Come, now is the time to give your heart. And come, just as you are to as you are before your God and come yes help us say one day but one day every tongue will confess to our God and one day every knee will bow still the greatest treasure remains for those who gladly choose you now yes I mean one day one day every tongue will confess to our God one day every knee will bow Still the greatest treasure remains for those who gladly choose you now Yes, come now is the time Hey, come Now is the time to worship Come Now is the time to give your heart Yes, come just as you are to worship, come, just as you are before your God, come. Yes, you know, one day, one day every tongue will confess you are God, one day every knee will bow, still the greatest treasure remains for those who Gladly choose you now. Yes, one day, 
One day every tongue will confess you are God. One day every knee will bow. And still the greatest treasure remains for those who gladly choose you now. One more time from the top. And come, and now's the time to worship. Come, and now's the time to give your heart. And come, just as you are to worship. Come, just as you are before your God, come. Amen. Let's continue to worship God together. Amen. This morning, as we slow it down, let's lift our hands, lift our voices together. As we worship in God's presence, amen. Let's sing of His glory. Let's sing from its top, let the reign of your presence. Seen from its top, and let the rain of your presence fall on me every day that I live, and with every breath I breathe, let the rain of your presence fall on me everywhere that I go. Lord, let your presence flow, rain on me. Yes, love divine, love divine, joy unspeakable and overflow, wind in my soul, this heart of Love divine, joy unspeakable, overflow, in my soul. Yes, this heart, this heart of mine is refreshed and at rest in your presence, in your presence. Let's continue to worship His name in this morning as we sing this song from the top Father of creation. Let's glorify His name, amen. As we sing out from the top, let's worship Him this morning, church. Help us out in the presence of God. And we come into Your presence to sing a song to You, a song of praise and honor. For all the things you've helped us through You gave a life worth living A life in love with you And now I just love giving All my praise back to you 
You're the Father of creation. You're the risen Lamb of God. You're the one who walked away from the empty tomb that day. And you set your people free with love and liberty. I can walk with you every night and every day. It's from the top. We come into your presence to sing a song to you, a song of praise and honor for all the things you've helped us do. Yes, you gave a life. You gave a life worth living. A life in love with you And now I just love giving All my praise back to you You're the Father of creation You're the risen Lamb of God You're the one who walked away From the empty tomb that day and you set your people free with love and liberty i can walk with you every night and then you're the father and you're the father of creation you're the risen lamb of god oh yes you're the one who walked away from the empty tomb that day and you set your people free with love and liberty i can walk with you every night and every day and let's give god praise him in this place amen let's talk about how much we love him father we thank you yes we praise you God, for all that you've done, God, the blood you shed, Lord. God, your grace, your mercy, your forgiveness this day, God. We exalt you in this place, Lord. Oh, yeah, no, no, no. God, we thank you, Father. God, you're worthy today of all praise. Yes, on glory and honor. Oh, God, we magnify you. Oh, yes, we thank you in this place. You're the Father. You're the Father of creation. You're the risen Lamb of God. You're the one who walked away from the empty tomb that day. And you set your people free with love and liberty. I can walk with you every night and every day. This morning, we're going to open this service in prayer, amen. I believe God to help us with a couple of needs. Uh, first and foremost, let's continue to pray, amen, for all of our leaders in our country, amen, that God will continue to help them, give them guidance and direction, especially wisdom as they uh, make decisions uh, that continue to uh, affect our lives each and every day, especially give them wisdom and guidance as they deal with the whole situation in Ukraine. Uh, that, that situation is just getting uh, multiple amounts of people involved. And thank God uh, that our uh, nation, amen, has already uh, partnered together. They've already sent uh, you know, uh, amounts of uh, aid in that direction. We're going to pray God continues to help them with that. Let's also include in here as well our first responders, amen, that God would help them wor work upon their lives. Uh, right now, there, there's, there's a siren right now, so something's going on, and there is an individual responding to that need each and every day. So let's pray for our firefighters, police department as well as all of our health care workers as well as they continue to serve, amen, on the front lines each and every day. We're going to lift them up in prayer also. Let's pray for our leaders in our fellowship, amen. Pray for Pastor Payne uh, there in Gallup. Uh, the conference is going to be starting uh, in about two weeks from now. So he's going to have uh, delegates from all over the world, uh, all over the states heading there uh, to the conference there in Gallup. Let's also pray for Pastor Mitchell, amen, our leader in Prescott. Continue to pray for him. Uh, pray for our mother church, amen, as well, Pastor uh, Aragon and his wife Sandra. That God would help them with all they got going on. 
they're still having to do services, I think like up to 50% capacity in the building. So they're kind of in a weird situation. They have people in the building. They have people in the parking lot listen to the, listen to the service via like a radio. Uh, so they're still having to juggle that. But they're going to press on as they always do. Let's pray for our mother church. Amen. As they continue to lift us up in prayer. Uh, lift up all of our friends here in Canada. Uh, leaders in Chilliwack. Amen. Uh, friends of ours in Battleford as well as Edmonton, uh, Saskatoon as well, and of course all the other churches you see represented there and just a whole plethora of churches uh, we have in Ontario. We're going to pray for them, amen, this morning. And let's also continue to pray for all of our uh, sister churches as well out of Chinle, just like you and I in this place, uh, these various parts of the states. I uh, also want you to lift up specifically the Tuba City Church as well. Uh, they had an impact team coming from Phoenix. They brought a team down with them about a bunch of witnesses. Uh, they outreach all day yesterday, had a concert last night. Uh, just I think he had about like 70 people show up to that. About like 15 people get saved. So a lot of great things going on there in Tuba City. Let's continue to believe God for their lives. Amen today as they lift, up, lift us up in prayer. Let's also continue to pray for all of our converts. Amen. Continue to pray for uh, Fred and Angela as they're getting settled into their apartment. He said he's trying to find himself a job. He said uh, keep that in prayer as well. Uh, continue to pray for our backsliders. God would help them minister to their lives. Amen. This morning, pray for Scotty. Amen. His family. Uh, pray for William as well. Uh, so thankful he's with us. Amen. Today, uh, recovering. And we're going to believe God to help and bring complete healing to his life. Amen. Today. So, uh, but more importantly, if you're in this place this morning, you have a special need in your life, uh, unspoken need, go ahead and make that known by an uplifted hand. You have a personal need in your life. You want God to help you with that. Amen. We're going to believe God to help us within all these things. Let's also continue to contend for God's Spirit upon this place. He would minister to us this morning, church. Let's call upon God together. Let's lift our voices. And let's call upon heaven. Amen today. Help us pray. Uh, God, we come before you this day. Father, we plead your blood, God, over this time and service once again, God. We thank you and praise you, Lord, God, for your diligence, God, your continued faithfulness unto us this day, Father. God, we plead your blood over this day, Lord, God. God, we come against every uh, demonic attack, Father. God, we come against every distraction, Lord, every single hindrance today, Father, God. We pray that your spirit, Lord, God, would have right away, God, that you would minister, God, that you would move today, Lord, God, help us. Give us encouragement that we need. God, give us strength, Father. We lift up all of our needs before you, spoken and unspoken. God, all our unsaved loved ones, God, that you would touch and reach down into their hearts today. We seek, Lord, God, that you would continue to help our headship and our brethren to feel, Lord, that you would be with their churches and their services today. God, even as you are with us, God, Lord, we call upon you in this time, God, in this day and age. Lord, God, that your, your spirit would move, God, that would minister and do more things we could ever ask or speak. God, help us, God, in this time. God, we lift up these things before your throne, knowing there's no other answer for our lives except you this day. God, we thank Thank you. God, we glorify you and praise you once again this morning. In Jesus' precious mighty name we pray. Amen, amen. Uh, go ahead and turn and welcome someone else. Amen this morning. Everyone needs compassion. A love that's never failing.
same place as this morning. Amen. Uh, if you're a visitor here in this place, amen, you're watching with us online, uh, we'd like to welcome out to the Potter's House, amen, on this Sunday morning. I want to thank you, amen, for being part of our service today. Remind you that all of our services are happening here in person, uh, located 1924 Main Street, unit number 7. Uh, services happen twice on Sunday, 11 a.m. in the morning, 6 p.m. in the evening. Wednesday is our midweek service, happens at 7 o'clock, so if you want to come and worship God together with us, we're going to be here. Uh, be faithful, amen, to that. Uh, continue to invite people, amen, send a quick text, uh, take a flyer with you, tell someone about Jesus, amen. Be a tremendous, tremendous blessing. Uh, Tuesdays, we do have prayer here in the building at 7 o'clock, so that continues each and every week. So if you want to come get a hold of God and pray, uh, spend some time, and if you have any needs or requests, as always, send it to us, and we'll be glad to pray with you. With whatever that is. Uh, main announcement we got going on is in about two weeks from now, uh, we do have the uh, Bible conference that is happening in Gallup, New Mexico. And obviously that should be a little bit bigger, um, but it's going to be happening in two weeks. Uh, so it's an all-week conference. It starts on a Monday all the way through a Friday. This is in, in, this is in the state in Gallup, New Mexico. This is our grandmother church. Just to give you a little bit of context to this, uh, the church that was in Gallup, uh, you know, they, they, uh, my pastor and his wife got saved, discipled there, and they got sent from Gallup into Chinle. That's where I got saved and discipled. And of course, from Chinle, I got sent here. So we are connected to Gallup in, in, in a very profound way without their labor investment. We would not be here in this place, man. I owe my salvation, amen, to the fact that Gallup had their church there. So they're going to be having their conference from the 11th all the way through the 15th. Obviously, we're not able to attend in person because we're way up here. But thankfully, they are going to be streaming this online. So if you want to come uh, take, a part, uh, take part in that, let me know. I'll be able to give you the, uh, the website you can tune into. Uh, but tune in, especially on Thursday. Thursday, uh, we actually, it's uh, what they have, the International Day. <clears throat> and uh, Pastor Derek Kloshi from Saskatoon is going to be traveling all the way down. So he's going to be there in person in Gallup preaching. But we can catch his preaching online. So uh, tune into that. If you've got any more questions regarding that, please let me know. And, of course, Easter is right after that. It's on the 17th, so you want to come worship God together with us on that special, special day. We're going to be here as well. So uh, keep that in mind. Amen. Uh, this morning, as we uh, move on to the uh, tithes and offerings, amen, uh, let's go and take the offering this morning. Uh, we're going to continue to believe God to help us, amen, with a couple of things. As we continue to give uh, faithfully to the, to the kingdom of God, sowing seeds, amen. You know, throughout all the years that I've lived and all the places that I've gone and jobs that I've had, the one thing that has stayed consistent is obviously uh, the faithfulness to God. I, I was talking to a guy recently. He was constantly you know, worried about a number of things, uh, needs in his life, uh, different situations he was facing. And I said, dude, if you just, just serve God faithfully, I said. And you know, I just began to relate to him how God has opened up doors that I could never do on my own, that God provided in ways that I couldn't do it on my own. And thank God that God really is able to do profound and supernatural things in our lives. And let's continue to give to the kingdom of God faithfully in our tithes and offerings. Reminder, you can always give via e-transfer as well as available to you, or you can drop it off an envelope here in the building as well. So church, let's be faithful to our giving. Let's give to the kingdom of God. As we bow our heads, let's go ahead and close our eyes as we pray. Over the offering this morning. Father God, we thank you, Lord. We praise you, God, for all that you've done. And all that you are this day, we ask, Lord God, that you would bless, Father God, every single gift and every single giver in this place. We continue to press your kingdom forward. In Jesus' precious, mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's go ahead and give this morning as we sing this song from the top rock of ages. The rock of ages, you are faithful and true. Rock of ages, you are faithful and just, and I will always put my trust in you. Yes, I will always, and I will always put my trust in you. Amen, musicians and singers, God richly bless you. Uh, this morning, if you have your Bibles, amen, I want you to turn to the book of Mark chapter 5, amen, today. In the book of Mark chapter 5, amen, this morning. Amen. 
You know, I was, I was uh, preaching in uh, Northern Battleford about a week uh, about a week ago now, amen. We had a tremendous time with our, uh, uh, our friends of ours there from across the fellowship. And I began to talk to a number of, yeah, a number of them and just, you know, listening to their, to their testimonies, how they got saved, um, you know, what they had to go through. And there was one thing that kind of echoed across each and every one of their stories, each and every one of their testimonies is that they had to press through some things. There are a number of them who had to press through uh, you know, some, some opposition. Maybe when they got saved, they weren't always the most popular person in their family when they got saved. Or maybe there were some spiritual issues and addictions they had to battle through. But regardless of all the testimonies and people that I talked to, they had this theme and this same idea that they had to push through a few things and, and to see God work in their lives. And that's the hope of our life this morning is that we want God to do some supernatural and profound things within our lives. We want God to do the impossible, to do what we could never on our own. But uh, we're going to look, amen, this morning, the book of Mark chapter 5, amen, verse 24. There's actually a whole story to this. but We're all going to read a few uh, passages of scriptures. The book of, uh, book of Mark chapter 5, verse number 24, amen, this morning. Uh, read along with me. And it says, so when Jesus went with them, a great multitude followed him and thronged him. Now a certain woman had a flow of blood for 12 years and had suffered many things from many physicians. And she had spent all that she had and was no better, but rather grew worse. Verse 27, and when she heard about Jesus, she came behind him in the crowd and touched his Garments, amen. Uh, let's look at a sermon I entitled, amen, this morning, pressing in. But let's look firstly about settling. You know, the interesting thing was, as we look at this scripture, we obviously have a couple of players in this story. We uh, obviously have the woman who, uh, our verse of scripture says she had an issue of blood. <clears throat> this was a medical issue, something she tried to go to doctors, and I guarantee if there's anyone like that, she tried multiple things to try to fix her. <clears throat> you also have him and the crowd that is there as well, but you also have the key figure to this miracle that she, she received, which was Jesus himself. And as we look at <clears throat> Jesus this morning, he had a very unique ministry. That it was not a common occurrence to see what he did every single day. We obviously look at Jesus' ministry and we know that his teachings, the times he spoke and he, and he brought her a deeper meaning to the Ten Commandments that a lot of people knew at the time, that he brought a profound amount of teaching and just, just honing down what the kingdom of God was about. His ministry also involved healing of sicknesses and diseases. He would touch people. He would minister to them. And in a moment, they would be completely healed of all kind of illnesses and ailments. You know, the, the, the lame would walk. Amen. He would also call the, the blind to see as well. Lepers to be healed. Tremendous things. But he would also delve into delivery of people who were oppressed, especially demon oppressed. He would deliver them in a moment's time. And of course, we all know that he raised the dead as well. And you look across Jesus' ministry, and this was not something you saw every day. Matter of fact, it's not something you see every day here as well. And because of this, his, his ministry traveled, amen, by word of mouth. They would tell each other about what they've seen, what they heard. And because of this, he became very sought out. And this woman hears about Jesus, that he can do miracles, he can heal people. And because of her hearing about it, she goes to him. Not only was Jesus' ministry filled with all of these miracles, but he was also very approachable. He was often seen around the poor. He was seen around sinners. He was often seen around what people would call unclean, people who had diseases or illnesses. And at the time, any kind of religious leader, which you, you can fit in here, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, they, th this is something they would never do. They'd sit at a different table. They'd find themselves in higher elevated places in the temple, and they would not mingle with the common everyday folks. But yet Jesus 
was a, was a minister to the people, that he found himself amongst crowds. And in our scripture, it says they followed him. They, those were not the most highest, the elite, but these were common, everyday, simple people that approached him, and he didn't push them away. His disciples got in a little bit of trouble because he had a bunch of kids try to come to him. And, you know, these disciples, you know, no, no, get away. He's got better things to do than, than mess around with little kids. But Jesus stops and says, you know, no, 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 let them come because I'm approachable. That whatever need you have, whatever situation you're facing, you can come to me with your problems, with your aches, your pains, the situation that you cannot fix on your own. I'm able to help that. And you don't have to be at a distance from it, but you can approach me very quickly. That unique ministry to do the impossible and him being so approachable is what made him so popular at this time. And because of this, Jesus was often surrounded by crowds of people. You look at all across the Gospels and the word multitude is actually mentioned a multitude of times. Because wherever he went, obviously, you know, there's a bunch of people that probably went there because they know wherever Jesus goes, he's going to feed us. <laughs> there is that crowd. But there's also the crowd that just wants to see what's the next thing that's going to happen. What is the next miracle we're going to see? Does he have a message for my life? And his ministry involved this. In verse 24, it even mentions that. A great multitude followed him and thronged him. That word throng literally means to compress or to crowd on all sides. Now, now picture this. Now picture you know, any number of celebrities. You take a, a, a certain celebrity. I, I read recently that Hillary Swank is going to be filming a movie here in Winnipeg. Yeah, so you know, Hollywood is coming here to Winnipeg. You, know, you picture like someone like that, right? Someone of high profile that is well known. And they decide to walk down Portage, right? And everyone hears about, hey, so-and-so is here, you know what? And what do they do? They, I want to go see. So, so they leave their houses. They, they drop what they're doing. And I guarantee it, there were people that probably called in sick and didn't come to work because so-and-so was down the way. And, and they all left. So you can picture he's so, he's, he's so popular. He does tremendous amount of things that we've never seen before. He's not going to push us away. So the, this crowd is now surrounding him. It's like this mass that is just moving, going all over the place. You know, recently I've been, you know, teaching my kids. Uh, actually, we've been like heavily into basketball for the past week or so. And, uh, you know, and, and as we're involved in this, you know, I had to educate my kids here and there. You know what? I had to show them a few things. And I had to show them, you know, let's just settle the case, kids. If you're going to learn about basketball at all, you have to learn who the best there ever was is. Not Kareem, not Wilt Chamberlain, not Dr. J, not Larry Bird, amen. And no, 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 it is Michael Jordan, hands down. And as we're showing them these you know, clips and just how big of a deal he was, <clears throat> it's crazy because no matter where he went, this crowd followed him. It was like that. He couldn't live a normal life. He'd go inside a house and they're at the windows. I don't, I never really mentioned here, but I can't imagine trying to use the bathroom in his day. Picture of that, like, just give me some, some privacy, my goodness. And this is the ministry of Jesus, and this is why she finds herself there. Because she's got a problem, she's got an issue, and you know what, I, I can come to him for answers. And she comes to the place where Jesus is at. And the problem is, is that this is where a lot of people stop or settle at. Because our scripture tells us that there is obviously a crowd there. And I'm not sure exactly where she came from. But I no doubt maybe she left from another city. She travels, she gets there, and now she comes to the event of the day. Jesus is all the way over there. The man that I need to see to help heal, direct my life, and heal me of my affliction. And in between him and me is a bunch of other people. There's a crowd of people. And it's not just like, yeah, they're, they're, they're pressing, they're moving, they're crowding all around him. And you could say at that point is where a lot of people can find themselves and they stop. They can stop themselves here. Not wanting to go any further. You could almost be satisfied. We know, okay, cool. I've made it. <laughs> I, 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 I saw him. Okay, let's, let's pack up the bags. You know what? This is, this is all great and dandy. Let's go back home because I, I made it. I was able to see him. 
number of years ago. I toot my horn about this, but I was actually able to see one of Michael Jordan's last basketball games in Phoenix. Granted, he was like 40, you know, he wasn't as spry as he used to be, you know, and he was on the Washington Wizards, womp womp, you know, it wasn't like the heydays of the 90s, but he was there. And, and I remember it being in like nosebleed sections. I'm like talking top tier, backside, you know what, I am way up there. And, and I remember my, my, me and my parents were there, my, my, my family, and we're zooming in <clears throat> as far as our little camcorder could go, you know, to try to get a glimpse in a picture. And we're so far away. There's no way we can get to him, but we left that place thinking, cool, I got there, I made it, I saw him, I'm going to mark this day down for the rest of my life. And for a lot of people, that is exactly what can happen. That we can stop the moment we get close enough. We can get saved and think, okay, I have arrived. I, I had my sins forgiven, and, and I, I've, I've made it, this, this is nice. Got the first job that I've never had my entire life. Oh, okay, okay, I'm here. My marriage isn't blowing up. You know, we're not killing each other. Okay. And for a lot of people, they can see the crowd and say, what? Well, it's not worth going any further. Why press in anymore? I, I've got this far. You got to have people who find themselves complacent, comfortable where they're at. You know, I could get closer. I could push and make my way, you know what? I could get on top of a building, maybe glide my way down. You know, I, what could I do? I could do what they do at concerts. They know what people surf, you know, get on top of all of them and make my way. But I, I, I've made it far enough. I think I'm okay here. You ever meet people who are kind of like that at a job? They've finally got the position that they wanted. They've worked hard. They've been diligent. They've pressed in. They, they, they've stayed late. They got there early all these years. But the moment they get that one dream job that they have, all of it stops. Okay, I finally arrived here. You know, marriages find themselves in this same position. Before I try to toot my horn, I've found myself in that position as well. You're infatuated with someone, you'll call all hours of the night. You know, just, no, you hang up. No, you hang up. And you're there forever. Buying flowers every day. Sending, you know, little notes here and there. But the moment you get married, okay, I've done my deal. <laughs> the romance has died. You know why? Try anymore because where I'm at, I've made it. And you can almost feel her at this moment. There are hundreds, if not thousands of people who are at that same place. Jesus is there. Here I am here. I think I'm good here. You know, it's very interesting that a lot of these people that were there were probably there for the same exact reason that she was. I know the Bible never mentions them. But you've got to imagine that within all those thousands of people that surrounded Jesus and were crowding around him, a lot of them probably needed the same thing. But yet in our scripture, it highlights that she pushed in. But what about all the other people who just got there? Okay, I'm here. I've made it. I, this is as close as I can get, and they're okay with that. <clears throat> And the thing about it is, oh, 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 can we be satisfied with just arriving sometimes? Okay, well, I'm not going to prison. I, I think I'm okay. <laughs> I'm not committing any crimes, you know, and I'm, I'm not in a trap house or anything. You know, I, I'm okay where I'm at. <clears throat> and that brings us secondly and quickly on to pressing in. Now, our scripture reveals something very interesting about this woman. That she does press in. In verse 24, it says, she, uh, when Jesus went with him, a great multitude followed him and thronged him. They're, they're all there, like, surrounding him. But then verse 27, when she heard about Jesus, she came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. If you Google up, you know, the, the woman with the issue of blood, a lot of pictures pop up where she's literally on her feet sometimes, crawling. You know, this illness that she had, they, they have surmised it. It might have taken a toll on her physically. It's not like she's some big, hulking, 
six foot eight wrestler, you know, that, that'll just push people out of the side and make her way. No, no, no. She's weak. She's beat up. And she's going through all these things, but she presses. She pushes. She goes beyond. Who knows how long it took her, but she finally managed to get close enough to him with thousands of people between her, and she reached out and she touched his garment. Think about this woman's task. She is only one of a thousands of people who needed something from Jesus. You know, a verse of scripture actually before this in verse 22, it mentions a man by the name of Jairus. And Jairus is actually a ruler at that time. And, you know, it has it, also been thought about that, you know, whenever you have someone important, you would make a way. Oh, hey, hey, here comes the ruler of so-and-so. Let's clear a path, you know, get away. And they often thought that's what Jairus did. This ruler who had a daughter who was dead, and he wanted Jesus to raise her back from life, who would pray for her. And they, they, they figure that when Jairus is coming down, they gather away. Because you know, this is an important guy. They, they part the waters for him. So we'd have a direct line to speak to Jesus because he's an important person. And in verse 22, it mentions that Jairus speaks to Jesus in the same crowd. But yet, if that happened for a very important person, how much more impossible would it be for a woman who had an illness, who was by herself, possibly very weak, to find her way behind Jesus and to touch his garment? I want you to think about that for a moment. What did she have to do? That regardless how hard it was to get to Jesus, this woman pressed in past that. And I believe that is an important lesson for us all to learn. You know, the Bible is filled with multiple amounts of stories of people pressing in. You think about Zacchaeus, who doesn't let his limitations stop him from seeing Jesus. In Luke chapter 19, verse 3, the Bible tells that Zacchaeus was not a very tall guy. And of course, you know, he's like little. And you have these crowds of people and he just can't see. So what does he do? Who's familiar with the story of Zacchaeus? What does he do? In verse number 3 of Luke 19, it says, So Zacchaeus sought to see who Jesus was, but he could not because of the crowd for he was of short stature. He was little. So rather than saying, I've arrived, I've got close enough, I can't do anymore, verse 4 says, So he ran ahead and he climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was going to pass that way. I could stop right here. You know, it's too hard, too much. There's too many people. I'm not tall enough. You know, I'm not going to let that stop me from pressing in to see all that God has for my life. We also see this in the book of Luke chapter 18. The widow who goes to plead her case, Jesus gives this parable. And she goes and talks to the guy. You know, can, can you help me with my case? He doesn't answer her. Ah, well... I tried. You know how many people I've met like that? You, you serve, oh, well, I, I've tried. But yet she pleads her case again and again and again to, to the point that she annoys this guy so much that he finally relents and just, let me just do it because she's going to be at my door until the day I'm dead. So I'm just going to, I'm going to do it for her. This woman presses in and sees a miracle. We also see the friends who lower the lame man through the roof. It, it, the, the same idea here. We heard Jesus is at 1924 Main Street. You know what, let's go over there. So they take themselves, they pick up their buddy, you know what, they take him in the bed, they walk there, and they think, you know what, it's going to be easy. He's going to be in a big old auditorium, and they're going to have a special section for all the people they need to get prayed for. It's going to be easy. But they get there and they realize, you know what, this is, this, this is insane. This is, like, this is like a celebrity came to our house, and he's inside the house, but we can't get in. There's hundreds of people outside. There's no way we're going to get in. So what do they do? <laughs> there, there's always one in your, in your group of friends that has that idea. Dude, let's go through the top. Shut up, man. No, wait. No, no, let's go I'm serious. Let's go through the top. I've built roofs. I know how to take it apart. Let's just go through the roof. We don't have any. Well, take this. 
So they grab him, they take him up to the roof, they take off the, the, everything, and they drop him down, and a miracle happens. Why? Because they press in beyond what is in front of them. You know, one man by the name of Marmon Philip said, the difference between try and triumph is just a little umph. Just a little, well, I've tried. But you put a little umph behind it, and you might find a triumph. You know, this tells us, amen, this morning, that we must press in. That we cannot settle. And that we must contend for a miracle in our lives. I believe there are a few things we have to press and beyond. Because this woman gets to the crowd and she has to press through a few things. Number one, I believe you have to press in past your emotions and your feelings. Because there are going to be times that you just don't feel like it. You know, think about the disappointment that this woman had experienced up until this moment. Our scripture says that she suffered many things from many physicians. She had spent all that she had and was no better. But matter of fact, she grew worse. I, I mean, you ever have a vehicle problem where you've taken it to mechanic after mechanic after mechanic, and you've done spent all your money, and now not only do you have a check engine light, but you have your tire indicators on, your radio is all messed up, you know, your seat don't recline back, and now your window don't even roll down, and your handle don't work. I've been there. Think about what you're feeling. The immense amount of disappointment I've tried. I've, do you know how many people I've been to for this issue that I've had? How many doctors have poked me? I feel like a pincushion. They've stuck me so many times. This is not going to work. But yet, beyond her emotions, you know what? I've got to push beyond what my emotions tell me. There are going to be, there have been plenty of times I didn't feel like doing the right thing. I didn't feel like being the better person. I didn't feel like keeping my mouth zipped. A plethora of times. There have been times I didn't even want to get up. The story goes that there's a man complains to his wife, you know, he's like, ah, I'm not going today. He's like, honey, why not? And I'm there, you know, and everyone has a problem with you. No one likes me at all. You know, it's just ridiculous. But, but you've got to go. No, no one's even going to care if I'm there or not. They're not going to miss me. I'm not going whatsoever. You have to go. Well, well, tell me, give me a good reason why I should get up and go. Well, honey, you have to get up and go because... You're the pastor. So, okay. Gets up and he goes. <laughs> How many times have you had to push beyond this? I mean, just in your job. Just, just, just fit that in here. You ever show up to work and you're like, I don't want to be here. I don't want to do this, but <laughs> I need the money. <laughs> I, I need to be employed. And you push beyond that. Anyone who's ever done any kind of discipline, whether it's dieting, budgeting, working out, there are times like, I don't want to do this. I, I, I want a triple cheeseburger with, with all the fixings. Give me triple fries, you know, throw onion rings on there as well. Every, every, every uh, fattening food you have, throw it on there. Forget my diet. Toss it out of the wind. I hate lettuce. I hate plain rice. Forget chicken again. No, no, no. Okay, just push beyond that and get it over with. Can you push beyond your feelings sometimes when you just don't feel like it? I don't want to do this today. I don't feel like going to get involved. Times even when you're tired, you ever feel tired? Like just like really tired, beat up, born, worn out, like you're done? Second thing I believe we should push past is we have to press beyond pushback. Now imagine this woman. She's a woman, obviously, which, you know, in that time was not the most highest position to be in. You know, they, they, they kind of were seen a bit lower as men. She was sick. And, of course, things never worked out. And you can even tell, you can even see people there. Like, she's on the outside. Where's Jesus? Well, he's over there. 
Okay, well, I'm going to go see him. Oh, stop it. You? Look at you. How close are you going to get? I could push you with one finger and knock you over. You're so weak. You're never going to see him. And even as she gets to the crowd, you have people nudging her, pushing her. I'm trying to get there too. But she's forcing herself. She's grabbing people. I can picture her going WWE, man. She's grabbing ears, twisting them, pinching legs. You know, and she's, she's going through the whole thing. And she has to push past all this resistance. There will be times that you're serving God and you're going to feel a little bit of pushback. This pushback might come from your closest confidants, your relatives and your friends who this is how you've been your entire life and now you want to serve God. Oh, now you want to become better than us. Oh, now you're all holy. No way. And you feel this pushback from them. In a society right now where having morals and standards as a Christian, you're going to feel pushback right now as well. You can talk about anything. You can talk about sports. You can talk about hockey. You can, you can talk about politics. But the moment you mention that I'm a Christian and I have some standards or morals, the entire context of the room changes. You will see this pushback that actually happens in the book of Luke chapter 18. There's a man who hears about Jesus, a blind man. Just, you know, well, I couldn't see Joe. Of course he can't see me. All you have to do is hear about him. And the Bible tells that he hears about Jesus. And, oh, yeah, he's coming close. So, so this blind man just begins calling out, Jesus. Jesus. He's yelling at the top of his lungs, Jesus. And, 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 and verse 39 of Luke 18 says, Then those who went before him warned him that he should be quiet. Just zip it. He doesn't want to hear that right now. He's in meditation mode, okay? He's in downward duck. He, he doesn't want to be disturbed. Leave him alone. But then it says, but he cried out all the more, son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus hears him, goes to him, and heals him. There will be times that you get pushback from people not wanting you to serve God. Can you push beyond that? Well, it wasn't like this before I got saved. Yeah, because everyone was on the same path as you straight to hell. But now the moment you want, you want to escape the boat that's going down, you, you want to get off that Titanic, of course they're going to have a problem with it. Of, of course now that you have to make a righteous stand, that you, you're no longer the person that wants to hear the dirty joke at work. And you, don't want to, and you make that known, of course you're going to get some pushback. But can you press beyond that? And the last thing is that you have to press beyond complacency. Now, what is complacency? It's find yourself in the position where you become very comfortable. You could almost say this becomes the routine, the mundane. You could even put in here maybe even meaningless. That you get to a place where it's just doing the same thing over and over again. You know, you see the same thing in the book of Luke 18 again. With a rich young ruler who comes to Jesus, and he wants Jesus to tap him on the back. Oh, you've, you've done phenomenal. There's nothing else you need to do. And for this rich young ruler, he, he's a man who up until this point has done everything. And he could say confidently, I'm there. I've done it all. All the things that you require, pff, I've, done, I've, I've did it. Yet, in verse 22, Jesus challenges him. Okay, well, let, me, let me give a little bit of a checklist. Have you obeyed your father and mother? Oh, yeah, since, I, since the day I was born. I, I, was, I was such an obedient kid. Even when the, when the doctor spanked me, I didn't even cry. Amen. And, and I asked permission before I used the bathroom at 2 a.m. Yeah, I, was, I was the best baby there is. You stayed faithful to the, the temple. Yeah, yeah, I've stayed faithful at the hands and day and day out. He gives us lists of all these things. And, and the rich, I've done all those. But yet in verse 22, when Jesus heard these things, he said to him, you still lack one thing. Yeah, you might have done all those. He said, but could you press in a bit past that? Let me ask you this question that you should ask yourself. Where can I press in in my life? Where can I press in more? 
Has my walk with God and my dedication to him become comfortable or complacent? Or is there more that I can do? Because you might find yourself like, and not even know it, you, you might find yourself as one of those in the crowd. You're not, you know, at the local bar throwing your life away. You're not dead. You're not right next to Jesus. You don't have a fire in your, in your bosom as a relationship with God, but yet you're kind of somewhere in between. Not really, in, not really in hell. Not really in heaven either. But you kind of find yourself in the middle. And you can get re- really comfortable there. But might I add, even at those moments of being comfortable, you still need some things. I, I think it's safe to say that the people that were next to Jesus needed things just as much as those who are on the very outside of the crowds. They all need something from him. But the difference is, who moves in? Can you contend all the more for what God has for your life? It was Brett Favre, the NFL quarterback for the, uh, the, for the Packers for a number of years. He said, most talent, talented players don't always succeed. He said, some don't even make the team. But it's not about talent. It's more about what's inside. He said, there are a bunch of people who have time. He said, but what pushes you beyond that? Uh, recently, I was listening to a, a little speech. Uh, a guy named Bradley Bill. I think he plays for the Washington Wizards. And he, I think he went to this college or this, uh, this high school. I'm not sure which, what it was. And he goes there, and he, and he walks right in the middle of this, 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 this group of guys. And he's like, you know what? Let me just give you guys, you know, the coach asked me to come in here and talk to you guys. He's like, all right, let me just tell you. It's going to be hard. The position that a lot of you guys are trying to play, you're, you're playing for my position. He's all, he's all look at me. He's all, I am not going to give you an ounce. I am going to work harder than you. I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to stay later than you. And if you think that you're going to come inside my league and try to push me out of the way, he said, you got something else coming. He, you're, you're playing against me. I want this more than you do. He's like, you're going to have to get beyond me if you're, if you're going to try to make the league, he said. He said, I, I don't call myself the best, but I, I'm pushing to be there. And you can almost feel the shock of these guys. Like, oh, man, I was, I'm just here to have fun. This is just something to do on the weekend. This, this is what my parents want me to do. But they said, no, no, no. And you felt it when he said, I want this more than you do. And the thing about it is, is sometimes that can be Christianity. Ah, you, we're not in jail no more, we're not bound in addiction and stuff. Well, you can get to the place where you get real comfortable being on the outside. Yeah, yeah, I used to be real close to Jesus. But after a while, you know, I went down to tie my, my sandal, and almost said, shoot my sandal, get back up, and he's a bit farther away. Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll get back. Moved to the side, you know, got a snack, and he's a bit further. And after a while, you find yourself no longer right next to him, but you find yourself at a distance. Because complacency has taken hold. You're no longer pressing in. And sometimes the miracle that you need is not found by being complacent. It's found by pressing in. Let's look lastly a minute this morning about breakthrough. And I'll close quickly here. You know, we find the miracle was simply because of God's ability. You know, what most people don't realize is Miracles often don't happen because of God. Can we all agree, like looking at Jesus' ministry and just at who God is in general, can we all agree that he can do just about every and anything that he wants? Like whatever it is, check the boxes. Raise the dead, done it. Heal sicknesses, done it. Transform the brokenhearted, the tormented in mind to sane, clothed, sitting at the feet of Jesus. He has done it. Broke, ain't got no money to pay the bills. He filled it. Can we agree that the, 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 the ability that Jesus has is not lacking? But if you look across the word of God and you look across history in general, it is never usually the inability of God that is why people don't see miracles. It is often the fact sometimes that people just don't press in. 
You can have a revival where there are 50 people there. And you can have people there who have genuinely pressed in. They've sought God before service. And, and when they're there, they're, they're tuned in. And the altar call hits, they, they hit it and they're pouring out their heart because I'm here for a reason. And God ministers, God touches, God breathes upon their hearts. <clears throat> Yet in that same atmosphere, you have people just, well, I'm just here because, you know, nothing else going on. The show got canceled tonight, you know, plans got changed, I'm, I'm just happy to be here. And on the outside looking in and service is over, okay, it's back to life. And in that same situation, that same scenario, you have people who touched God, he ministered and did miracles in, and some who don't experience it. And it's not because of the inability of God. But not many people are pressing through and having faith. And that's what we find in the scripture. <clears throat> this woman receives a miracle, and Jesus acknowledges her faith. In verse 34, as we skip down, we know, we know that he, she touches the hem of the garden. He took, turns and says, who in the world touched me? And all the disciples who are, who are just clueless, oh, everyone, no, 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 no. There's someone, I, someone had different intentions, someone pressed in, they touched me, I, and they're healed. She gets up, you know, it's me. And then in verse 34, he said to her, daughter, your faith has made you well. Do you have faith enough to push beyond? Oh, yeah, I have faith enough to arrive. Hey, I could have been in Damascus, but I'm here in Jerusalem. I had enough faith to bring me here. But is your faith enough to push you beyond that? Yeah, I had enough faith to come and give my life to Jesus Christ and forgive my sins. Okay. But can your faith push you beyond that? What about the other issues and problems in your life? What about, what about those? Is your faith strong enough to help you press and beyond? Because the inability is not often lying, God. It often relies on us. And I want to encourage you in this place. You know, we, the, the, we can find ourselves in many positions like this. But the question is, can you press in beyond it? Can you fight the crowd? Can you fight the emotions? Can you fight the torments, the, the pushback, the resistance, the disappointments, the letdown? Can you push beyond? You know, no, 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 no. I need a miracle. I need God to touch my life. I need God to minister to me. And I am pushing until I touch the hem of his garment. And the moment I do, thank God. It doesn't matter how long it's been. I'm going to keep pressing. I'm going to stay next to him as long as I can because I need a miracle. And that's all we have this morning. Let's go ahead and bow our heads and close our eyes in this place. First call, amen. If you are here this morning, you're not saved, you're not born again, you're not right with God. Maybe up until this point, you have experienced lots of disappointment because of what is called sin. You know, we, we, you know, we can get involved in a bunch of things, but one of the, the, the most vile and subtle destroyers of life and happiness and joy is something called sin. And maybe up until this point, you're like this woman. You, you've come because you've tried a lot of things to fix that hole in your heart. That emptiness, the loneliness. The fear that you have before you go to bed. And you've tried a lot of things. And maybe like this woman this morning, you, you've, you've exhausted all resources. You've done tried everything. But can I tell you the miracle of, of, of condemnation and guilt and shame being erased from our hearts lies in Jesus. And if we lift up our voices and cry out to him, he'll, he'll come to us. And, and this morning he can forgive you of your sins and wash you clean and set you free. It's the first call this morning with every head bowed and every eye closed. If you're here, you're watching with us online, you're not saved, you're not born again, you're not right with God. But you want to give your life to Jesus Christ, I want you to lift your hands. Say, Pastor, raise my hand, pray with me. I'm not saved. I'm not right with God. I'm not born again. I want to give my life to Christ. Here's my hand, pray with me. Front's back, left, right. Maybe you're back, start in this place. You once served God before, but maybe you turn back. Give your life to Christ, man, in this place. Amen. Changing the call, speaking to the church. Let's go ahead and stand to our feet, amen, this morning. And we're going to open up these altars in just a moment. And what these altars, amen, are going to be about is pressing in. And I want you to think very quickly about what you need God to do in your life. Like what miracle do you need God to move in you? And can you press beyond a few things? 
I, I, I've ministered to new converts, and they've had to press through some resistance, uh, emotion sometimes. And I will say as a person who's lived for God for, for close to 20 years now, consistently, is I've had to fight some complacency in my life. Not being satisfied with just beyond that and not experiencing all that God has for us. You know, can we press in, in this, amen, this morning? And can God do a miracle, amen, for us? I mean, where in our lives, amen, can we press in? I mean, if God has spoke to you, amen, this morning, if God has challenged you, I want you to come and find a place to pray at these altars, amen, this morning. We're going to lift our voices and call upon God, amen. Let's, let, let, let's lift up these situations that we're facing, amen. And I have no doubt in our minds that there might be an issue in your heart right now that you have to contend for. These are things you have to press in for. I don't know about you, but a, but a broken marriage it has to be something fought for, contended for. A relationship with God that doesn't come haphazardly, but we have to diligently seek. We have to cry out. We have to be faithful. We have to surrender all things to Him. Oh, God, that you would help us, amen, this morning. Church, let's lift our voices, amen, this place. Let's call upon God. Think about Jesus' ministry, amen. It was full of miracles. And I want to encourage you, He is approachable. That no matter what situation you have, no matter what problem you're facing, you can bring that to Him. He wants to help you, amen, today. He wants to bring some healing he wants to open some doors in your life. He wants to break the chains of addiction and bondage. Oh, off of our lives this day. I mean, church, let's lift our voices, amen, this morning. I want you to plead your case before God. At this altar, there might be some things that need to change in our lives as we go home. There might be some dedication that has to be ramped up. There might be some sacrifices that have to be made. But I want to encourage you in this place, let's press in. Let's continue to contend for the miracle that God has promised us today. Oh, yes, we praise you. We worship your name, God. Worthy, worthy, worthy is your name, God. Lord, we seek you today, God. Lord, that you would do mighty things in our midst again. God, give us breakthrough, God. Lord, answer prayers, Father God. Do tremendous and mighty miracles in us. God, we seek you this day, O Lord. Worthy is your name, God. Yes, worthy is your name. Church, just spend some time at this altar, amen. Don't leave this place until you've touched heaven. Don't leave this place until you've made some decisions, amen. Oh, God, we worship you. Yes, we thank you, amen. I love you and I love you I need you you're my only hope I'll never let you go yes you're my savior you're my savior my closest friend I will worship you until the very Let's give God praise, amen, this morning. Father God, we thank you, yes, we praise and glorify you. 
Father, we worship and praise you. Amen. Amen this morning. Amen. I just want to encourage you this morning. Let's continue to press in. But one of the most needed aspects in our life about pressing in is involved in prayer. That's one of the most needed and most overlooked oftentimes is in prayer. Now, how many, all those things I, I talked about, how many of you experience those in prayer? Like, <laughs> you pray and like, prayed once and nothing happened. I prayed... But you got to press beyond that. There's some in this place that you've got some relatives and family and friends that are not saved. And you have to contend. You have to call upon God. Say, God, I'm, I'm not, I am not going to stop praying until they're saved. You have to continue to press in for that. Oh, yeah, but just multiple things in our church as well. Let's contend, continue to contend in prayer. Amen. So uh, that's all we have this morning. Amen. I hope that encourage you and challenge you. Remind you, and we have service tonight. Amen. At 6 o'clock. Uh, prayer is going to be at 5. You want to come get a hold of God and pray before service. It happens here in the building. So tonight we have service six. Be inviting folks, man. To, to tell someone about Jesus. Take a flyer with you. Tell someone about Christ. We're going to have a tremendous uh, time of service this evening. So church, let's go and bow our heads tonight, uh, this morning, as we close our eyes and pray, as we are dismissed. Amen. Father God, we thank you. God, we praise you. Lord God, for all that you've done this day. God, we thank you for your continued faithfulness unto us this day, God. We, Lord, we pray that you would let these words seep deep into our hearts, Father God. Help us, Lord God, as we press in, as we contend, Lord God, for miracles, that you would be be faithful, God, to your word. God, be diligent, Lord God, and help us with all the things we have need of this day. And bring us back safe for service once again tonight. In Jesus' precious mighty name we pray. And all God's people said, amen, amen. God bless. And we shall see you tonight. Amen. At five for prayer, six for service.